Hello, my movie peeps. Thank you for clicking on an episode of Side Flick. My name is Chris. Let's talk about some news. Some of the stuff we're going to be discussing here today is we finally have the release date for Jordan Peele's next horror movie. We got some possible details about Sony wanting to revive the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. Even an article that popped up today on how Dwayne Johnson kind of messed up the post credit scene for Shazam Fury of the Gods. That along with so much more, so you guys know the drill. Leave me your opinions with everything we discuss here today. Timestamps will be in the description if you want to skip around. But even if you decide to do that, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. But with that out of the way, let's jump into our first movie news story here today so let's ease into things right here because we got ourselves the first little set photo letting us know that the Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel is finally filming. Revealed on the official Ghostbusters social media accounts we have here day one of the Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel. It doesn't have an official title but the working title for the movie is Firehouse obviously a nod to this movie finally bringing back to life the iconic Ghostbuster Firehouse that was part of the post credit scene for Ghostbusters. Afterlife. Now, although we do have Jason Reitman here in the photo, he will only be a producer this time around. He's the one who directed the last Ghostbuster movie and is also the son of the original Ghostbusters director. But right next to him is the director this time around, Gil Cannon. And well, sadly, that's all the bit of information we have right now. A lot of the cast members from the previous movie are expected to return. The only thing that this has me wondering is I don't think they're going to meet their release date that they currently have for December 20th, 2023. You're telling me you're going to film a Ghostbuster movie that is usually VFX heavy and this is the sequel so you know they're gonna go bigger and badder you're gonna film it for the next couple of months do all the visual effects work start prepping the marketing get it all sent out to the people and still release it by this year I think this movie's definitely going to be moved to like May or June of next year. Then again, anything is possible and they could still meet that release date of December of this year, which I would hope for. But nevertheless, I'm excited that they're making another one, man. I really enjoyed the last one and I think it's a good stepping stone back into this world. This is where I throw it off to you guys. You see the first photo for the Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel. What do you want the title to be and are you excited for it? In some other interesting news here, Jordan Peele has announced to the world when we'll be getting his next movie. It got officially confirmed that Jordan Peele's next film that does not currently have a title will be releasing December 25th, 2024. Around the same time will also be the release of Avatar 3 and Sonic the Hedgehog 3. It's going to be a stacked month that December and already with a new Jordan Peele movie up and coming, it's got us all in a frenzy. I know there's those commenters in there right now going, oh, Jordan Peele's overrated. How could you be hyped for another movie of his? The man brings us uniqueness to the theaters every time. I've really quite enjoyed every single one of the movies he's directed so far from Get Out, Nope, to Us, and to hear he's already hard at work with his next project. Oh, I'm excited. It's just left to wonder, what's it gonna be about? You know, I'm curious. They didn't even say it's a horror movie. You know, he's done three straight horror movies. It would be kind of interesting if Jordan Peele decides, all right, I've kind of mastered the craft of horror a little bit. Let me see if I can do a comedy, an action film, a drama. That could be a definite possibility here. Of course, with the Christmas release date, I see a lot of people thinking that it's gonna be a Christmas related horror movie. I would love that to be the case but usually christmas related movies don't release on christmas day i'm sure there's an exception somewhere out there but typical marketing goes for a christmas movie you release it kind of a month before or at the beginning of december that way you have that whole christmas feel and people go back to see it all throughout the month you release a christmas movie on christmas that's great for that day but after Christmas, people are no longer thinking about Christmas. That hurts box office right there. So I kind of don't think it will be a Christmas related movie. I'd love it to be a winter related film. And you know, with Jordan Peele, he has such unique different approaches to what he decides to direct. I don't even know the subgenre he's going to tackle here. You know, is it slasher? Is it paranormal? He kind of did his own unique spin on an alien slash creature movie with Nope. I guess you can maybe count us as a slasher. You know, a group of people going after one another. Get out psychological thriller? I guess that's what we call that one. Either way, super excited to see what Jordan Peele does next. I'd love to hear your guys' wants or wishes for what you think Jordan Peele's doing next. Moving on to something interesting here that I am going to say, take with a grain of salt, but I am really trusting this source. You guys know last year we had the release of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot or requel as Scream is now calling it, where it was a direct sequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie and trying to reboot that franchise, okay? That's like the 10th time Texas Chainsaw all has tried and gotten rebooted because of the pandemic and things going on it ended up going to Netflix and although Netflix doesn't necessarily release the numbers for their movies I can pretty much bet you it was a hit whether you like the quality of the movie or not it's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre you can essentially watch for free on Netflix 
that thing was going to get eyeballs on it. And ever since then, we've heard rumblings that Netflix has been really interested in more Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies going straight to their platform because Netflix only cares about people watching the content regardless if it's good or not. I mean, if it's good, it helps people stay on it, but if it's not, hey, and you're watching it, they don't care. Bringing me now to an interesting development on what's been going on with that here with CineStealth. This is a source I trust. It's a scooper online. I've been keeping an eye on them and a lot of stuff that they've reported on comes to fruition. So to me, they have a good track record. But here in a recent tweet this month, they let us know, rumor has it, I know what you did last summer isn't the only slasher friend franchise Sony is seeking to revive, and I'm not talking about their Urban Legend reboot plans either. That's exciting on a side note. Continuing on, the most recent reboot last year did exceptionally high numbers for Netflix, and they initially wanted to co-produce two back-to-back -back sequels with Legendary, who owns the rights to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But Legendary's recent distribution deal with Sony might have changed those plans. Apparently, Netflix didn't have any contractual agreement in place regarding Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequels. Ball seems to be in Sony's court for now, and rumor has it they are interested. Okay. So essentially what is happening here, guys, if you remember a couple months ago, we talked on a side flick, Legendary stepped away from their partnership with Warner Brothers because of everything that happened in the pandemic. They were not happy that their big Godzilla vs. Kong movie went straight to HBO Max in theaters the same day, along with movies like Dune. That really hurt their partnership with Warner Brothers. They weren't happy with that. So Legendary separated with them and then formed a new deal with Sony Pictures, meaning now whatever movies Legendary has up and coming, it's going to be with Sony. Sony releasing them out to the people. And since Legendary are the ones that own the rights to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they were thinking about continuing the franchise with Netflix, but now with their new deal involving Sony and them seeing the recent rise in slasher movies, I mean, Scream 6 is a great example. It recently just beat out a superhero movie in the box office. Think about that. A rated R slasher horror movie made more money opening weekend than something like Shazam Fury of the Gods. That's a sign that people want slasher movies. Or at least recognizable slasher IPs. And what's one of them? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, of course, nothing is official right now, but Sony has already shown interest in wanting to revive these 90 slasher movies. They have plans right now for I Know What You Did Last Summer with the original cast. If they see they also have the rights to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they're going to want to go ahead and move on that too. But that's really where we are right now for my fans of Leatherface is it looks like we were about to get back-to-back -back sequels to what was already the previous reboot for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which, you know what? I wouldn't have mind that. Yes, that movie was not not great it was filled with terrible characters but the leather face in there kind of ruled he was kind of like the best leather face we had gotten since those 2003 2006 remakes so all you really needed was a better story and characters and i would have been hooked on but uh looks like we're back on possibly rebooting whether starting all over direct sequel to the original that's going to be up to Sony if they decide to move forward. So this is where I throw it off to you guys. Would you rather have Netflix just bust out the back-to-back -back sequels to the already started universe? Or do you want Sony to just reboot it once again? Moving on here, we had an interesting little development with Marvel Studios. You might have seen articles going around that an important vice president recently got fired. Or I should say walked out of the company. Variety has it here, Marvel Studios veteran producer Victoria Alonso exits. Now this producer had been with the company since 2006 and their job title consisted of physical post-production VFX and animation at Marvel Studios. And there's been a lot of talk surrounding the exiting of this as maybe Marvel finally taking some accountability for things going kind of slightly downhill for them. I'm still not on the train to say Marvel has completely gone downhill, but there's been a dip in quality lately. And along with this article there have been other journalists like one here with Vulture and New York Magazine who commented further on this story by saying so many VFX sources have told me Victoria Alonso was singularly responsible for Marvel's toxic work environment. A kingmaker who rewarded unquestionably felty with an avalanche of work but who also maintained the blacklist that kept FX pros wild eyed with fear. She held a crazy amount of power big footing all major creative decisions on Marvel movies and shows Kevin Feige and Victoria Alonzo personally approved every single shot 
all the visual effects work, which is usually the job of a director or a showrunner, one tech told me. And so right now, a lot of articles are using, you know, Victoria Alonso's exit and escape to, to kind of frame things into looking. Marvel is fixing their VFX problem, which could very likely be true. You know, we've seen them do some drastic changes after Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania, and it looks like Marvel could be panicking a bit. I mean, they should even be panicking a little bit with the Shazam box office numbers. That's a sign that possibly people are getting tired on just average okay superhero movies. They want the best of the best, what you used to produce, Marvel. The common complaint is the VFX and how things just don't look as nice as they used to. So while I'm not ready to completely blame this person for the entirety of Marvel's VFX, problems I feel like there has to be a lot more people responsible than just one person I do see it as maybe a step in the right direction that we are finally seeing some accountability at Marvel that they're starting to realize we're not in the golden years forever and if we want to come close to them we got to make changes this is where I throw it off to you guys you see a VP was recently let go who was in charge of the VFX work do you see this as a sign that Marvel's taking accountability or is this just a case of a person who's worked at one place for so long it was time for them to move on and well on the topic of studios dealing with behind the scenes drama we got a couple of updates with shazam and black adam an article was published today by the rap that says how the rock sabotaged shazam 2 and black adam and a couple of interesting details were let know in this article for one it was said that zachary levi was going to play shazam in the post credit scene of black adam but dwayne johnson stopped it in its tracks instead he was really hoping for the henry cavill superman cameo that we ended up getting and is now going to lead nowhere and then for shazam fury of the gods the post credit scene that we got was a lot different spoilers if you haven't seen shazam fury of the gods it got reported here that the rap confirms that in shazam fury of the gods the justice society from black adam were recruiting shazam in the post credits the rock denied access and david f sandberg had to make a last minute decision to add emilia and john that is the two peacemaker characters that we see in the post credit scene so many interesting things to be here man it just continues to let me know Dwayne Johnson, why did you have this much ego over Black Adam? Look, that movie was not fantastic by any means, but I found it entertaining, and I thought maybe there's something you could do here that I'd be willing to watch in the DC universe, but I really would love to see Shazam and Black Adam eventually fight, go together in a third movie. And to see that the studio and creative heads were desperately trying to make that a build-up to happen, because it's only logical sense. Shazam and Black Adam is Batman and Joker in this situation. They're characters that are eventually supposed to fight one another. It's kind of wild that Dwayne Johnson just didn't want that to happen. I thought when I first watched that post credit scene, I thought it was an obvious confirmation that Shazam is here to stay. Zachary Levi will remain the character for the new rebooted DC universe or half rebooted universe is what they're doing right now because it clearly had James Gunn's characters in there. It had the Peacemaker people and we know they're staying. But no, the director David F. Sandberg confirmed that they filmed that a long time ago, that James Gunn had no input whatsoever into that post credit scene and that they just kind of left it as is because it doesn't conflict with whatever plans James Gunn has for the future. And now with the movie bombing at the box office, it doesn't seem likely like we'll see this guy ever again. Because I got to think that's the reason people don't care to want to go see these movies, right? They must have heard they're rebooting things. There's a new Superman movie coming. And until that film is released, I don't think I want to watch any of these other movies. I guess we'll find out when The Flash comes out and how that box office goes. Maybe Tom Cruise's big approval of the movie will give it a big box office bump. This is where I throw it off to you guys. You see this stuff going on with DC. What's going wrong, man? Should they have waited to announce this reboot? Should they have just stuck with this messed up universe? Because it feels like they're sticking with at least half of it in this new reboot. Love to hear from you guys down below. But that is all movie news we're currently going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.